The online presence for small businesses has become even more important. It was important already, but that importance has accelerated and expanded as a result of the pandemic. Advertising online and through social media constantly changing, constantly evolving, constantly bringing new ways to reach customers and bring them in. We'd like to hear from you on the topic of online advertising, how you use it, what you like, what you don't like. You can click on the poll tab uh, that is on the right of the window that you see in front of you and tell us how you use digital platforms to advertise your business. Our next guest is a famous business consultant uh, and a real guru of how to reach customers in part through the multiple platforms that are available to you. He's Gary Vaynerchuk of VaynerMedia. He is the CEO. He is a best-selling author, an entrepreneur, an online phenomenon, and as he puts it, a dude who loves the hustle, people, and the New York Jets. Well, he's got a lot of pain to live through with the New York Jets. He was interviewed recently by our senior media and entertainment correspondent, Julia Borston. Gary Vaynerchuk, thank you so much for talking to us today about what small businesses need to be thinking about now in terms of marketing. Gary, why is this such an important time for small businesses to be reimagining what their marketing approach is? It's always a good time to spend money in the wisest way possible. I think right now there's a lot of businesses, especially in the SMB space, that are being challenged, that the way they've always done it has changed. And whether you're a local restaurant or a brick and mortar operation, um, we are seeing shifts in consumer behavior because of COVID. And right now, even if it's going great, how about people that are manufacturing masks or have a DTC brand? Like this is a moment and whether you're trying to fight for survival and you have to make every dollar work tremendously well, or you're having your great moment and you want to maximize this lift, having the proper marketing and every dollar spent is really always the way to go. And so social media, how crucial is yes. social media right now? And how do you recommend that people think about approaching social media. There's so many options, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, YouTube, even we were just talking about TikTok and Reels, this new format on Facebook. How do you make sense of this? Reverse engineering your customer or your current customer or the customer you're trying to get. get. So if you're selling to 55 year old B2B decision makers, whoop, LinkedIn becomes the number one place you need to know how to do content and media. If you're trying to acquire 15 to 25, all of a sudden TikTok and Instagram matter a whole lot. So step one is figure out who you're trying to target. In the macro, I would argue that Facebook is still the most underpriced attention. Their media product, their ad product is incredible and has the broadest collective reach. So if you're a big company within the SMB, that's always gonna be a place you're gonna wanna be in. But I do think step one is who do you want? And I do think that LinkedIn and TikTok have the most organic reach. Those are two places you can post and not spend ad money and get customers. The other platforms become a place of who do I want to reach? And if it's, you know, stay at home moms to buy my stuff, all of a sudden Pinterest, all of a sudden Instagram ads, not just posting and hoping ads become really important. So you alluded to this, this idea that you have to post, but then there's also ads. How did this paid and organic reach combine here? How do you recommend businesses think about doing both? Can you do just one and not the other? It's really hard to go on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook right now and do organic. Meaning set up an account, put stuff out. You have to be exceptionally talented in your creative or your personality to break through and you'll probably need six months to a year for it to happen. LinkedIn and TikTok, you can literally go on and be stunned by how many people see your stuff randomly because there's a lot of attention and not as many ads or content creators on there right now. Quickly that's changing on both platforms, especially TikTok. So I'm a huge proponent of running ads on these platforms because in comparison to direct mail, TV commercials, print ads, banners out, you know, flying over a beach or outdoor media or anything else one can do with money, um, I find them to be more efficient for their dollar, more localized, which matters to most of the SMBs watching right now. Um, and so I think that's how you have to look at it.
And so Facebook in particular, I mean, they're the 500 pound gorilla um, because it's Facebook 100%. and Instagram. And I know they've been really working to do cross-platform advertising, making it easy to go between Instagram and Facebook. And also we've been hearing a lot from Facebook COO, Sheryl Sandberg, about her investment in small businesses. She wants to help small businesses. What's the best way to really connect with customers on Facebook or Instagram? Zip code and interest targeting. I mean, if you're a pizza shop owner and you were a very, you're, you're, you wanna rev up your deliveries or if you're a dog grooming business or if you cut hair and you're willing to go to people's homes or want them to come in, you, you, you basically target the one, five, 10 mile radius of your location. And you, really the game is less about the ads, it's about the content. Are you compelling? In, the cartoon you draw in the commercial you make, what you make on your phone. By the way, this is this can make your spot. Um, and so, I think the biggest thing everybody has to realize is: is the video or picture that you're going to put out bring people value? Again, no different than direct mail. I went into my dad's liquor store business, and they did direct mail, and all of a sudden I came on board, and our direct mail campaigns were ten times better. It's because I did a better job. Then Carl, the manager, this is literally who did it, in picking which wines and and packaging it with a way that was more exciting when somebody looked at the flyer. Same thing here. Everybody knows how, every, all you have to do is Google, how do I run a Facebook ad for my local business? And you'll get all the ways to do it. The question is, do you know how to make a good piece of video or picture to get somebody to be compelled to do business with you? So then how do you know? How do you make the right video or the right picture? And also, how do you decide between video or picture? I mean, there are so many choices here. A lot of these small businesses may never have actually been creating ad content for these platforms before. First is self-awareness. And then second is test and learn. Self-awareness. If you're uncomfortable in front of the camera, well, then maybe you shouldn't put the camera and make the video. Like, it's okay. Make a picture. Take a picture. Um, so self-awareness, video will outperform picture if you're comfortable in it. Number two, spend only $25 in ads, $100 in ads against a single video. And if you don't like what you're seeing, then you go and make some more. Now, don't give up too early. Sometimes people give up too early. So spend an appropriate amount of money, change up the copy that supports the video or picture. It's test and learn, test and learn, test and learn, test and learn. You have to get good at it. It's like saying become an NBA player. Well, you're gonna have to have talent and you're gonna have to get good at it. You have to practice. I am blown away by how many people refuse to put in the 10 hours of learning to save their business. I, re I really am serious about this. So many small businesses hit me up. They're like, Gary, I just don't get it. I'm like, well then do the homework, run an ad, become a practitioner. Um, you know, it, it, it's your business. You're trying to save it. And tell me a little bit more about this idea of testing. It seems like because Facebook ads, you can spend just $100. You can limit the amount that you're spending, and it gives you the ability to try something, stop, do something totally different, and try it, um, try something different. Why is that so revolutionary? I mean, before, you had, used to have to make a really big ad commitment up front, and now you do have that option of iterating. Tell me about that and what you recommend as people approach the concept of testing. I used to sweat in my full page ads in the Star Ledger and New York Times for my wine store because I had to like really, really figure out is should I put Cabernet in it, Rosé? Like one of my, it was so intense. Now you can put out 8,400 different variations. I know it's a big number and I'm not trying to scare anybody off, but you can put out 11 of the products. You know, everybody here right now who's watching probably thinks there's eight reasons that they should do business. People should do business with their business. Well, make eight different ads telling people about that and then see which one gets the best comments and see which one gets the most phone calls. Like you can literally run an ad on Facebook that does a phone number uh, uh, action and literally people press the number and call you and you're like, oh, I'm getting the most calls from this one because this week I'm running the, you know, our prices are better or the next one, our service is better or, you know, and so it's, I mean, it's truly revolutionary. I mean, you're just not wasting money if you're good at what you do and if you've really learned this crap. And what about the storytelling itself? Advertising is about storytelling. These are such weird, uncertain times. How should businesses be thinking about what story is appropriate right now? 
you know, I think for small businesses, this is where we have a bigger and better advantage than big companies because ki- big companies get killed for being tone deaf because they're big companies. I think for SMBs, we're all just trying to get by. So, you know, look, you should be compassionate. Um, you should never try to trick people. But I do think that at this point in COVID, at this point in Black Lives Matter, I do think based on what I'm seeing, it is appropriate to run an ad and say, hey, this is what I do. We cut hair, we sell pizza, we can take care of your dog, we can distract your child for four hours with our live session or consulting, like whatever it may be. Um, I I do think that as long as you're not audacious or scaring people, like if you don't buy our stuff, you're gonna get COVID. Like as long as you have good intent and you communicate your value proposition, I think the tone is, um, is, is open right now. And how should people be watching tone? I mean, is this the kind of thing where you need to be constantly measuring tone? How far in advance in this day and age do you think you should be making ad commitments? Uh, 24 hours. Like, you know, in a day where there's this much contentious, you know, uh, environments, you don't want to get caught. And this is where big companies have it way worse than small businesses. All of us on our phones, putting it on Facebook tonight, we know that Beirut happened. Somebody else might have an explosion literally in their TVC that they did a month ago. They can't air it now. Uh, by the way, that happened to VaynerMedia. We had, we had in our Super Bowl spot for Hard Rock, a helicopter scene um, that we had to take out because of the devastating passing of Kobe Bryant and we didn't feel it was on tone. That was a lot of money and energy committed to that. And so I think SMB is the context of this conversation. I, I'm in the SMB world. I think we have it good. We can do it in real time. And tell me also a little bit about sort of pricing right now. What's happening in the market right now because of COVID, because outdoor advertising is not as valuable as it used to be. What's happening to pricing as a result of that? Well, the biggest opportunity for everybody watching right now, and it's kind of going to go away here pretty quickly because Facebook is too important to the big businesses. But, you know, some of the prices went down on getting in front of people on Facebook because you kind of pay for every 1,000 people that see your ad, not engage with it. That's up to you uh, because a lot of brands pulled out dollars, as you're aware. And so I see hyper underpriced opportunity on Facebook and Instagram. And then the natural, forget about COVID or anything else, underpriced nature of LinkedIn and TikTok uh, podcast, reaching out to podcasts and asking them to do a live read like old radio, I think is underpriced. Um, You know, OTT, Roku and Hulu, I think have some underpriced products. Um, And then you have overpriced. I mean, I spoke to my outdoor guy um, who I know really well, Scott, big shout out. And he's like, the prices are like discount by 10%. I'm like, there's nobody on the road. Like, how, like, so there's some overpriced areas as well. Uh, newspapers, I was curious, reached out just to be educated in case a question like this was asked. No heavy discount. Fascinates me how the traditional landscape doesn't adjust to the reality of the marketplace. And I think it comes from an audacious place. And I do think this is where digital continues to eat up market share. And you mentioned that Facebook is dealing with that boycott. Um, And a lot of that really is about the big brands. But when you're talking to small businesses, how do you talk to them about establishing trust with their customers? Are there certain platforms that seem more trustworthy for ads or or you think sort of lend themselves more to building a a new relationship with customers, especially for brands that may not have had a huge presence online before? No, I, I, I think that, you know, to really decide that Yahoo or television or print or Facebook have a variable difference of trust with consumers. That's Madison Avenue talk. The end consumer is proving every second of the day by their actions that they'll trust the creative is the variable. You know, the creative, and if you're having trust issues, put your phone number there and answer the phone and show them a real person's there. You'll, you'll be able to win that game. Plenty of SMBs under deliver on delivering on their promise to the customer and then they get bad reviews and their business get hurt. The truth always wins these games. Truth always wins. The importance of authenticity. What is one mistake you frequently see small businesses make when it comes to advertising, especially as they move into new formats? There's a ton of people watching right now that, say this guy's wrong, Facebook doesn't work. I've run some ads on it and it didn't work without realizing that I also play basketball but not good enough to be in the NBA. Facebook ads work, are you good at it? And I think that people blame platforms for their inability to be good at targeting 
ads or doing good creative. And so the number one mistake I see is people giving up on a platform because they had a not successful campaign when that was their fault, not the opportunity. You must talk to so many entrepreneurs. Are there any examples of something a company has done during this weird period of COVID that turned out to be a big success or really showed a smart pivot um, to embrace new opportunities? Or is it something even that you've done yourself? Yeah. I do know, a co- I, I'd love to give them a shout out. I just don't remember the company, but it was an apparel company that just moved directly into making masks, made Instagram and Facebook and YouTube ads because the CMO reached out and said, hey, we've been following you. We've, we've just kind of been on this, because of COVID, we tried some new things. We made new product, a mask, and we've run the ads differently um, uh, on, on Instagram. And it's now 35% of our business. Um, so there were some people that pivoted on their product and their marketing behavior and have seen massive growth because of it. And it sounds like America really wants to root for small businesses. So this is the time to play up the fact that you're an alternative to the big giant. Always. America is a deeply small business advocate, almost always. Don't get it twisted. This has always been a country that cheers for the American dream, for the small guy and gal until they become the big guy or gal. Um, Then they have a different relationship with it. But yes, this is an absolute, you know, if you can just get over the price issue, like if if small businesses could deliver the value on price that businesses do, they would have all the business in this country. This country absolutely roots for entrepreneurs. So focus on the fact that you're a small business, offering the service, authenticity and messaging, personal storytelling, video works better than print and content. Content. Any final thoughts on the the, the right kind of content? If you're good at your business, you've probably heard what people want. You know, the truth about your business, your strengths, and using a lot of empathy. And go to Twitter and search your business or your category, like pizza shops, back to Sal's Pizza, and see what people are talking about. Make it contextual and relevant. You know, make it about them, not you. Too many people are selling, 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 and it's an infomercial, not a piece of content that inspires somebody to consider you. So also using social media as a source of data and research beyond just the ad itself. All such valuable, valuable uh, information, insight, Thank you so much, Gary Vaynerchuk. Gary V, you're always the best. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.